Hello everyone. In this episode, the similar splashes at the interactions of the fracture buildings and the tsunami. The interactions on the left are basically invisible, so I'll skip them and mainly focus on the interactions on the right. Without further ado, let's get started. Drop a geo. Import the fracture buildings. It's not necessary to involve all the buildings on the right. A few are fine here. When it comes to how many simulations to be done is proper, we need to check out the current rendering effect and find out which interactions are exposed. Then there are our target. For example, the interaction of this building with the tsunami is now well covered, so one more simulation is necessary here. Similarly, around this building, there are no splashes that can cover the intersection well either. As to these two buildings, there's no such problem. So we skip them. After measurement, I choose these buildings to work on. Alright, let's start off with the source creation. We need to extract the intersection areas as before. The polygon distribution of the fractured building is uneven, so convert it to VDB. Then to polygons again to get an even distribution of the polygons. Next, we import the tsunami mesh. Drop a color node. Then an attribute transfer. A small distance threshold is fine because the splashes at the intersection needn't be as large as those we made before. Instead, it's fine as long as the intersection can be well covered. Well, there comes a problem. As the distance threshold is a bit small, and the subdivisions of the mesh is a bit too few, the source is not big enough. My solution is to add some more subdivisions. To be more efficient, we only work on this area. Fix the fracture building at the first frame. Then add a bound and adjust it to box up this area. We can make it larger, as we may use it in the later simulation. Then extract the tsunami mesh in this area. And subdivide it. Good. We extract the source here. Perfect. Let's clean up the unused groups and attributes. Only keep well for future use. OK. Let's figure out when the source disappears. The tsunami is interacting with the building at the first frame and disappears at around the 86th frame. So we set the frame range to 1 to 100. Cash it out. Awesome. Next, we set velocity for it and create a pop simulation. Directly copy the previous process. Of the many processes, choose one as per our needs.
Let's check it out. Here we ever set the direction towards the camera. It's fine. No further adjustment. Getting to top. To get last few splashes, we bring the inherent velocity down slightly. This node doesn't need twigs. Let's go into the sub solver. Delete this range as it is far away from the current simulation. Keep this node as it is. Collision objects here. The two boxes in the foreground are useless now, so delete them. Replace this collision object uh, with this fracture building. Besides, it's just a source, so no need to make it collide with the tsunami. Let's come to the file cache. Set the frame range to 1 to 150. Toggle off the pre-render script for the moment. We will set it later after finishing this simulation. Let's cache it out. Awesome! It looks good overall. The current volume is large enough to cover the intersection. Because we directly copied off the process here, their dynamics are alike. Nice. Next, we are going to convert the pop to VDB as the source of white water. The point radius scale is a bit too large. Decrease it. Up the same rest for more details. Speed range here. Reduce its two values so we can get more particles in the source. There's no vorticity attribute on these particles, so disable this option. Alright, done with the source of the white water. Next, we move on to top settings. Let's first set the star frame. Keep it the same in these file caches. Then build the basic process of white water simulation. Set up the path of the emission source and the volume source. In terms of some optimization settings, we can directly copy them from the previous process. One is to optimize out the particles inside the simulation based on depth. Another is to optimize the particles inside the tsunami. Then bring in the collision object, the tsunami. Set the bounce of the ground to zero. Let's get down to the white water solver. Referring to the previous settings, we set a slightly lower simras. Increase the velocity multiplier a bit to get a relatively larger spray volume. Then the lifespan. When colliding with the tsunami, it's too long for the spray to stay on the surface for 5 seconds. So let's set it to 3. 90 frames are enough. As for the limits, get the fluid box in the bound 1 here linked. The way to link them is the same as before, so I'll skip it. Solve one frame and check it out. Perfect!
uncheck enable density control. Otherwise, it can make some particles clumping, which is not good for splashes. Repellents here. We can set its size range by referring to the scale of the scene. My option is 0.7 to 2.8 after tests. Increase the strength range. It acts on the foam on the surface. If you work on the river, larger values here can help forming the cellular foam structure more quickly. For the white water of the tsunami, a larger strength can bring more tender-like textures. In this case, you'd better not check the enable density control. Otherwise, it will weaken the details inside the tsunami. Then up the mean value of the noise range a bit to avoid the cellular foam structure being too regular. So much for the white water solver. We copy from the previous chain to output the white water. Change the star frame to 1 and cache it out. Very cool. We can see abundant details inside. Like here. If you want more details like this, you can increase the base advection strength over here. We have explained it in detail before, so I won't repeat that here. I think it's good. Let's make a flipbook. Okay, done. The white water simulation works well with the building. You probably feel it lacks some power. However, we need to be clear that its role is only to integrate the building with the tsunami. Just like what we mentioned before, every simulation has its own role. If you're not sure if it's good enough, you can combine other simulations to figure it out. That is to say, when making one or more simulations, we ought to have a general idea of the intended effect for each simulation and picture the whole thing in our mind during the process. This way, instead of endless adjustments, we'll know to what extent the effect is good enough. It's not about how detailed each element you make, but how well it looks in the whole scene. What I mentioned above is my experience about the initial stage of a project. The next stage is to concentrate on refining details, according to the advice from your director or whomever. Actually, no matter what kind of VFX effect we're working on, even just an element, such as an explosion, a flame, or a splash, it is infeasible if you merely focus on obtaining abundant details. Because when any FX element is put in a scene, what we need to all the way be considering is whether it can totally integrate with the scene. That is a very important point. Alright, let's return to our splashes. Very cool. Let's go on. Except the white water, we still need to simulate some mist surrounding the white water and adjust the materials to make it thicker inside the white water. Thus, with mist surrounding it, it can bring some variations in the density. Concerning the mist, we still copy of the previous pop simulation process. Set the star frame to 1. This part is to delete the particles inside of the surface field. We don't make flip here, thus no surface field. So delete it. Remove the force here. It's fine as long as the simulation can cover the intersections well. Then we tweak the file cache. 
Okay, let's cash it. The dynamics are good, but there is still some concern. One is that the quantity of particles is a little less. Another is that the volume of the white water is a little small. Just play the white water. You see, it's mostly swallowed by the white water. Almost useless here. Let's fix it. Increase the birth rate. And up the inherent velocity a bit. OK, cache it again. It's done. Compared with the previous simulation, this one is greater in particle quantity and volume. Perfect. The rest part of the simulation is the rendering settings. I'm going to skip it because we have demonstrated that. Let's move on to this building. It's not a standard model and some specific operations are needed here. So let's handle it first. We can see its mesh is not closed. Definitely it will go wrong when converted to VDB. So it will be good as long as we cover its bottom. The solution is very simple. As the lower part of this building is under the tsunami, many ways will do. My approach is to get it spam first. And merge them together. Create a reference copy of the transform. Then the converted VDB looks good now. Display the tsunami. We tweak the bounce slightly. The building is going to sink in a very short time, so no need to keep the range that large. It's fine as long as the white water is not cut in the camera view. The source is a bit small. Let's expand it slightly. OK, come to the file cache. As the tsunami has already hit the building at the first frame, then we need to start to solve it at a negative frame. Usually, the pop simulation is fast to get a good look, so let's set it at negative 20. Let's figure out when the building is entirely swallowed. At around the 60th frame, we cast the source out. Next, we set up the switch node. Connect it to the output of attribute Bob. Later, we need to adjust the velocity directions of the white water for different buildings. Rename it. Come to the Python settings here. Here, we also need to switch up directly copy from the previous settings. 
set the start frame to 1 for the first cache and bring in the path of the dot. OK, hit accept. One down, one to go. Let's copy the Python script and paste it in the second one. Change 0 to 1. And set the start frame of dot to, let's see, negative 20. Set the start frame here to negative 20 as well. Take it. Let's cache it out to see how it comes. One problem here. Basically, the particles are moving forward due to the velocity direction of the source plus the sinking building. Thus, a lot of particles are deleted by the tsunami movement. Let's say an object is drifting on the water surface. Its ups and downs will give birth to some splashes. So I'm going to set a slightly upward velocity. of the multiplier in the y direction. Meanwhile, I'd like to make the outline of the velocity lines vary more obviously. Let's increase the attenuation to differ the velocities greatly. Next, we set an automatic switch of the collision object in the fluid box. Create a reference copy of this switch. There are two object merge nodes importing the tsunami mesh. Let's leave one. OK, let's cache it. Compared with the last version, the quantity of the particles and the volume of pop simulation are much larger, and the particles are moving a bit more upward. Let's take a look in the cam view. Perfect. All right, done with the pop source. The next step is the white water and the mist simulation. Pretty much the same as before. Except the rendering settings, there's nothing else to be set. Very simple, so I'm going to skip them. OK. Done with the fluid simulation at the intersections of the tsunami and the buildings. We are going to merely render the white water and the pop mist like before, import the white water here, and set up the volume conversion as per Pisco. I set up the time to be enabled here and here. No modification here. All are achieved only in one dot. The velocity settings follow the previous operations. Regarding the end frame of each simulation, we set it within a frame range in which the simulation is still visible in the camera view. Say the white water is blocked by the buildings or other simulations now, then it's not necessary to cache all the frames out. Here I cache 120 frames only. OK, let's preview the dynamics. There are two sets of splashes. One is the splashes in front of the tsunami. The other is the simulation at the intersections. The dynamics look good. Next, we set up the rendering. Import the white water and the pot mist into new geo nodes.
as to the materials, we apply the previous ones. Okay, basically there's nothing wrong. The intersections are well covered with a satisfying volume. Like here. Come up here. The outer pot mist looks diffuse and the inner white water is slightly solid. As to the splashes here, there is something wrong with its materials. A bit inflated. We'll fix that later. Alright, so much for this episode. See you in a bit.